Hey guys, Blake here. If you like what we're doing and want to support us, you can go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Support us on Patreon and we'll answer your questions on the show. We'll address topics that you want to hear about. We'll even advertise your product with us and much, much more. Everything you guys donate goes directly into the production of the show, and we always appreciate when someone helps us out. So go check us out on patreon.com slash humanfactorscast today. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Billy Hall. Hey, here. guys. How's it going today? And Mr. Blake Arnsdorf on my left. What's up, guys? How are you doing? Man, okay. We good? We good. Oh, we we're good. good. Oh, we're good. We good. We good. We, we, we so excited. Yes. Uh, we are back again. Yeah. Billy is back in studio Hi, for the first time Thank uh, goodness. since all his uh, since faces. his departure. Yes, we actually yes, yes. um we actually just invested in some equipment to make sure that that never happens again. What can um, I say? I like to roam. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. That was a good one. Thank you. I'm impressed. Shoot. Okay. Thank you. My favorite has always been Rome, if you want to, all around the world. world. Yeah. <laughs> Says the guy whose last name is Rome. Yeah. Well, that, you, that's. I, we, Blake, w- when in Rome. Catching up. All right. My, my last name is full of puns. All right. So, yes, Billy is back. Blake is here. Hey, Blake. We are good. What up, um, Billy? You know, at the start of the show, I would like to bring up something. This is not in the show notes. I know oh, I keep doing I keep doing this to you guys. He's going off Some script. Sp- He's going off script. I script. can't handle all of this. I know. Uh, I, I do this from time to time where I will intentionally, wink, wink, leave stuff out of the show notes just so that way I can bring it up. And it's a surprise to everybody. Uh, this is the one where they're kicking me off the show, isn't it? It is. So, <laughs> so Billy is no longer going to be with us. We had such a great time last week without him. No. <laughs> Wait. Pump the brakes, Nick. Right. No, 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 no. Billy is not going anywhere. Uh, please don't send me emails about that. I. <laughs> Billy is staying. He is here. He's fine. We know. We know you guys like him. We love him. All right. So, <laughs> no. The exciting news, if especially if you're a Star Wars fan. Ooh. Yeah. We're 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 oh, talking about it. We're we're talking, talking about, about it. Our super secret project? Yes. So, if you are a Star Wars fan, if you love human factors, we, next week, you can expect... I'm so I, I'm, excited. I'm, I'm so excited. I can't even formulate a sentence here. Next week... Yeah. Us guys here at Human Factors Cast... Right. ...are going to transform the studio... And we're going to become human cyborg relations. Uh oh. Oh, oh, man. Oh, we're going to get our light blasters. So, we're, we are going to be doing a Star Wars podcast next week. Um, this will be a monthly podcast where we kind of take a look at the insight behind the design of Star Wars interfaces. Now, this could be anything from the X Wing fighters that you see mm-hmm. right. in A New Hope uh, all the way through what we find out in Rogue One coming up in two weeks here. So, Which is going to be awesome. Oh, it's so exciting. I really actually. One of the most interesting topics I'm thinking about is I really like to figure out how protocol droids really work in like society and everything like that. You know what I mean? Because we did our second show was computers as human actors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, We're close enough. Yeah. But but that is the kind of topics that we will be talking about on the show as Mm -hmm. it pertains to Star Wars in a galaxy far, far far away. away. I'm very excited about this. I can't think of a single show. Well, we made a couple shows where I haven't made a Star Wars reference, but it's very close, near and dear to my heart. But that being said, this is a Human Factors cast show yes, where we it talk is. about Human Factors. <laughs> we are not going to bore you with Star Wars, although if you are a Star Wars fan, please tune in next week. Uh, it's not going to take a place of our normal slot normally. It's no, just no, going to no. be for next week. and then we'll treat. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. kind of like that extra topping on the cake, as yeah, Billy likes to say. Cherry. That's going to be super yeah. fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing the X-Wing fighter. Um, <laughs> Oh. And uh, just how the human factors of that goes into play. It's it's exciting. It's exciting stuff. I'm excited. But today, Billy, mm. I'm going to ask you, because I yes. always ask you, and it was weird asking Blake last week. Oh, yeah. Well, he I, doesn't I, give I like good that. answers to questions. <laughs> nah, Blake, Blake, Blake didn't get it right. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> you did Blake fine, was, Blake. Blake was fine. You Blake did was great. Fine. He made them statements. But Billy, 
What are we talking about today? We are going to be talking about Hearthstone as it pertains to the player experience. You know, that Blizzard strategy game that everybody plays on tablets, computers, and cell phones. Uh, we're going to be talking about those platforms and how they... Uh, how we use them and everything, well, how people get in. That is exciting. I yeah. mean, this is this is a great time because yeah, yeah. Hearthstone just came out last week, or not Hearthstone, the core game, but they just released an expansion. Yeah, and and like Billy said, this is a game where you basically go through, and uh, it's it's a card game, right? Right. And uh, it's based on characters from the Warcraft series. And, right. 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 And. Um, you basically battle each other with these cards, and and we thought this would be kind of a good excuse uh, to mask an analysis of multi-platform interaction. Oh, that's interesting for yeah. sure. Because I think all of us kind of have played it on different platforms. Right? Well, what are you, what is your experience on? So uh, for I am you, Nick. I am a PC player, so I I, I mean I've played it on tablet or right, right, right. or uh, mobile, but it's nowhere near as enjoyable for me as on the PC. And you you you're a fan of Hearthstone. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's it's pretty addicting. And How about catchy. you, Blake? See, I love it, and I only play it on my phone. That, that, yeah, it's fine. it's interesting. Yeah, like I've never played it on PC. It just like I got hooked on it as soon as I downloaded it. And Billy, where do you play? I play it on a tablet. Dang! Now, now that's the other thing. I, I like Hearthstone. It's a fi fine game, but I'm more of a magic player. You know, I feel that, you know, going with it, that magic, that Hearthstone is a clumsy, non-interactive card game, while Magic the Gathering is a more elegant card game for a more civilized age. Oh, I see. I, yeah. I see what I did there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you threw in a Star Wars Yeah, reference. I know, because I knew there you were is. going to announce it yeah, today. Yeah, you, you had no idea, though. I anyway. did. Right, I anyway. know you. No, but... Uh, you. You know, Billy, we do have friends at Blizzard, so please don't upset uh, their no, feelings. No, no, no. Great game. Uh -huh. I, 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 uh -huh. Everybody has their preferences. Yeah, I, I mean, I like it. In, I don't know. I, I think, think it's, it's awesome. a great game. Don't get me wrong on that. Okay, I won't get you wrong on that. But this is interesting. So we have three unique perspectives, mm -hmm. as we always try to do. However, this time it just kind of happened serendipitously. Uh -huh. right? That's right, true. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, we, we didn't plan this. It's just kind of a matter of our experience, and it just so happens we have that broad spectrum. So, um, first off, I guess, what's the first let's, question? Let's, yeah. I think the first thing we should do is just borderline do it for all our listeners. What is Hearthstone? Right. Yeah. So, so, you mentioned it earlier, right? This is a mm -hmm. strategy card game. Right. Um, that uh, basically you have cards and you sling spells at each mm -hmm. other. You summon creatures. Um, th this flavor text is directly from the uh, Blizzard website. Uh, but you command the heroes of Warcraft in duels of epic strategy. Epic. It kind of sounds like the field of human factors, honestly. Right. <laughs> oh, you know, I know. Know. Seriously. We're, we're all, all wizards and warlocks. I get it now. Exactly. Exactly. You guys created Hearthstone as well, a recruiting process. You know, we, we, do, we do know a couple HF people over there. So, uh, uh, yeah? They might. I have based it on personal experience. <laughs> okay, so you get in the game. So, yeah, you know, that's the interesting thing. So you get into the game, and what's the first thing as a player that they have you do? Well, okay, so what's your experience? Let me ask you. Let me flip it on you. I'm going to ask the question now. Oh, oh, oh okay. Man. Well, the first thing that we do when we get into the game is uh, – we go through a little tutorial, right? Yes. It go tells you this is how you play, this is how you attack, this is how you put right. spells and things like that. Now, let me ask you an interesting thing about the tutorial. Okay. I have to go way back. It's been yeah, a long time. I know. It's been a while. But, okay, so, so thinking about that, did they ever say, tap the screen? Did, no. Did they ever say, click the cards or tap the Do you remember any of this, Blake? Well, it's it's kind of gnarly if I say it because I had to, I just walked through all this stuff again yesterday when we were kind of putting this together. Oh, okay. really? So they they do they give you peripheral controls about what to do. So it's but it's very subtle if you're not paying attention because like you and I have played on mobile and right, right, yeah. right. I remember like a little green arrow flashing down and like bring it here. They yeah, never yeah. specifically say like click on this. It's no. it's like it highlights it, right? Like it, it illuminates the Little card. Well, I mean, when you start it up, it says touch to continue. Oh, like it's a, box, oh yeah, like that's, that's oh, right. I do remember that. I didn't, I remember so that. There, there are like subtle right. hints and they do. And we talk about it a little bit in like further down, but they do use like textual stuff at the beginning in the tutorial. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what this does. Da, 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 da. Right. Yeah. No, that's definitely interesting. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I have, uh, a thought here. Mm. Let me pose it to you guys. Oh, so man. I feel like they, the, I mean, the controls are dead simple, right? I mean, click, drag, or tap and drag if you're on mobile. Yeah. 
do you think that they re they rely too much on user intuition with this, right? They say touch to continue, but that's all they give you, really. And I mean, they, I, I, I don't know. You did you you did the tutorial most recently here, yeah. So. See, I don't think they do because all they leave on the screen, like if we're just talking from touch to start, like after you do that, everything else is a button. Mm, mm, mm. So it's it's pretty. It's pretty simple well, what you got what you go through next. Yeah, but and I mean, how do they do it when you get into the cards? I wouldn't mean, it also like, be they... considered the idea of dynamic? I mean, like they know that the people that will be attracted to the Hearthstone card game are probably people who are either a a fan of Blizzard or b a fan of World of Warcraft games. So I mean, would they would they think that maybe most of their people would have be able to utilize these things, utilize computers and stuff like that? Oh, I mean, being just tech savvy so. by what they are interested tech in. Literally. Yeah, Probably. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Do you guys take that in consideration when designing yes. that? Oh, for Absolutely. sure. Of course. Yeah. But, I mean, there's always that good sort of um, cushion that you want to build in, right? You you do want to get, like, if this is a deceptively simple game like they advertise, then mm -hmm. you do want to build in that that for, for the every person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. if it's available on mobile. It's going to be accessible by many people, especially if it's free. Like, once you start compounding these, you're going to start getting into another demographic that... Mm maybe, maybe you didn't necessarily think about. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. I see what you mean there. So, I mean, you go into it, but you expect the idea of other people to be brought into it. Right. Okay, so what is, like, the trap card or the snare that Blizzard uses to get new players into Hearthstone? That's a good one. That's that's onboarding. Yeah. Yeah. So that really digs digs into how onboarding. they start people into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we talked a little bit about onboarding on the show before. Mm -hmm. I, do you guys remember what episode that is? Onboarding. That I do not. It was probably for UX design. If I, I was going to take, you a know, class. I think I think so too. I'm sorry, guys. I'm failing you. I'm a little bit fuzzy on that. You're so fuzzy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, is this a callback to how hairy you are, or is this? Hey, you know what? Everybody digs the hair. <laughs> fuzzy fuzzy i feel like i'm the least hairy here both of you guys are like sporting beards i shaved mine off last week yeah and... but he looks so sophisticated i look more like the wild man i'm going well, we... for the whole 90s <laughs> joey lawrence look all right <laughs> okay so you were asking about onboarding yeah um let's see here so uh blake you want to tackle this one yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wrote it i hope you'd want to tackle it <laughs> yeah for sure so the interesting thing is i didn't remember some of these steps but it it's i don't know Blizzard's done this right. So up front, if you're like a brand new user, you don't have a Battle.net account, It Blizzard gets you just jumping right into playing the game. You don't even actually have to create, account at the, create an account at the time. You can just start right away with a tutorial and get get playing right away. They, they don't require you to have an account? No. That's, it's a secondary option. That's amazing. Because they try, I think the way it works here, it's a bit of a trap. So they get, they get you to start playing, and then like if you try once you try and leave, they'll catch you on the way out. Oh, like, oh you should you activated lose all your track. stuff. It's oh. it's really unfortunate that I don't have our Star Wars soundboard up for next week. That would be awesome. Well, yeah, I anyway. mean, the other side of it to be able to a lot of people get into card games because they want to play with their friends. True. You know, so I mean, they also you can't play with other pe friends without their Battle.net accounts activated. So that's another way of getting your Battle.net account. Going. That's true too. That, yeah. Or Blizzard account, as they're now called. I just yeah. find it fascinating, though, that they don't require any sort of info. Like that, how many times do you sign up for an app and they're like, mm, "We need your info first. Yeah, yeah we but need to access your contact. This and is your a GPS location. This is a huge barrier to onboarding, and they just circumvent it. Yeah, because I think they're amazing. targeting a whole different set of people, and it was well, just, yes, yeah. So but I, I mean, know. but I mean, well, let's think about that and how how you can apply that to other apps, like. I mean, it wouldn't work with something like Facebook. You can't have a Facebook page without well, it's info. It's so reliant on you as a I, person. It is. Yeah. Right? I can see it now. How about you take this person's Facebook page for a spin and see how you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you catfish some people while you're at it? Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's interesting, though. Like, think about, mm, I don't know, like other gaming apps sometimes require information. Steam? Like Steam, well... Yeah, but all your games are tied to your user account, so it's well. It's technically, more of a same thing with Hearthstone. Hearthstone is a platform too, because 
all your cards and all your games and all your accomplishments and all the different modes are tied to your Hearthstone. Well, account. yeah, but you can't use Steam without an account. That's what I'm saying. Is you can I use Hearthstone without an account. Okay, okay, I get it. There, there's a difference. Okay. Man, I should have, I should have thought about, I should have given this more thought a little bit before before the show because this is really interesting. I'm trying to think of an example where where this where you could utilize this trick. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of people that do it, but I think one that would be great is stuff like uh, productivity apps, like Evernote. Like if you could use that oh, without yeah. ever creating an account and or, it could save any of your like free text or any of that stuff you use. Or, you know, it, it gets a little, um, I can see why they do it, but like apps like DoorDash. So are you guys familiar with DoorDash at all? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, never yeah, used yeah. it, but I, I love think that. I know the concept. So Isn't that the one where they like bring you food? So yeah, the premise yeah, behind yeah. DoorDash is you can you can get any sort of food that doesn't necess- that doesn't normally deliver. Yeah. And somebody basically is like the Uber for food. They'll go order your food, pick it up, drop it off at your door. Now they doing? do I see you wanting to say something, Billy, but hang on. They will have you make an account and your first order is free now wouldn't it be cool if they circumvented that and said just give us your address and it's yours well the first you the cost of shipping and uber just opened their own version of that yeah they did Yeah, uber eats yeah, yeah. uber eats i i ordered from that the other day it was awesome all right we're getting way too far off topic but sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. so we're talking about onboarding onboarding, onboarding. onboarding. so another little trick that they use is uh they actually get <laughs> we use tricks okay get over it i, mean, I that's, knew it that's how we do it magic and all that kind of stuff magic. although although this is dabbling a little bit more into marketing well i mean human factors plays into it but this is definitely, oh, this more is definitely marketing. Much marketing yeah because mm-hmm. i mean Gosh, onboarding is really job a is actually process. really multifaceted in that yeah sense. We need to get, like, a marketer on the show who, like, just absolutely preys off of human psychology. Anyway. (laughs) I might have one. Uh, But anyway, so they give you a free pack of cards. So that gets you, like, going through the interactions of, like, how you open a pack, what do you do with it. Ah, yes. Getting new ones, rares, all that kind of stuff. Rewarding players for coming back. Yeah, well, you reward them up front, even. Yes. So it's, it's like, all right, well, that's cool. Oh, yeah. No, I understand the idea of that. Everybody who's played a card game also understands the joy of cracking a pack, man. I tell you right now, my fiance, I got her into playing Magic. Oh, she loved buying packs of cards and just opening them because you never know what's inside. It's exciting. It's very true. You know what I mean? It's the same idea as people who do scratch cards. And that gets them more involved. That first pack that you normally open always has something really cool inside of it, too, because they want to show you the different types of cards. Mom you get always you stoked, keep coming back. Yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Us. Mom always <laughs> told me life was like a pack of magic cards. <laughs> Hearthstone cards. Hearthstone. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, what's up? What what else you got? All right. Like? So kind of the other onboarding process that they go through is they just walk you through the general story. Like what's going on, what are the heroes, what you get for fighting with cards. That kind of stuff. Uh, and then they also do a really good job of just walking you through the turn-based system of, of a tra- strategy card game. Mm-hmm. Like, I had played, like, Magic Online before and a few other actual card games like that. And this was just really good, real simple, real quick. They, they lay down the foundation of the game mechanics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the game is actually really simplistic, which is great. Yeah. That's the sign of a good card game. Yeah. Simplicity, but you can get into complexity. Does yeah, that make and sense? you can pick yeah. up the mechanics real quick so you can get to that co- you complex can make, play. It has hard, solid rules that you can use in your advantage right from the get-go, right? That's, yeah, that's a good callback even to our board game design. Yeah, we talked yep, a lot yep, about yep. how... Yeah, how um, Having defined parameters boundaries and things like that and being able to play around in them i feel like every episode we have a ton of callbacks to other shows which is good we're building on past knowledge well you're absolutely right like i said we're just building a huge syllabus we oh, should make yes. like a show syllabus we should <laughs> Sell it. Syllabus. That'd be so sick. like a reference chart that if you like this you can go to all these different episodes that would be really cool all right, what else you got like so the uh, there's like two big things they use to try and like get you get you to understand like how the game is played right so they just use placement of things in the visual field so like the first time you walk through the tutorial they show you where to put the cards how to interact with them Mm -hmm. like showing different like using both color and like visual arrows and text just to give you an idea of okay this is how i play this game and this is human factors at its finest too like they they emphasize the saliency of you know a visual component on the screen they highlight it like we were talking about earlier they highlight the card to indicate this is the card that you should pick or this is where this card goes right that will 
and, highlighted. And the other side of it is, is they reward you for actually following their distra- instructions. They don't just say, you know, good job, moving on. There's an explosion. There's yes. combat. There's yeah. bright, shiny lights flashing around. They you hit know? that dopamine sensor real hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they also have this, like, big red arrow that locks on the places. And, like, it says, yeah. like, you cannot do any moves. You know, wherever the arrow can go, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Right? If the yeah, arrow yeah, doesn't yeah. go there, you can't do it. Yeah, like, they're really good with like the colors too they choose because red's always no, and then green is like, all right, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. and gold it means something and stuff like that. Yeah, the colors, Duke, the color. Billy wanted to do an episode on colors. I Why like that... colors episodes. Yeah, we should we should definitely get that. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And and that's the other. Uh, so like, you go through the game, you go through the tutorial. What do they do then? Uh, so that's kind of really where. It kind of drops off the one thing that i do like that they emphasize throughout the gameplay is making sure that you never really forget the mechanics Mm -hmm. and they seem to always do this through color because like i i wasn't super familiar with other playing card games like magic the gathering didn't really know the rules Mm -hmm. so they they'll continually like remind you all right you have to like click this button to hit the next turn or you can only use this set of creatures that are on the board because you just you didn't play them this turn just that kind of stuff uh, but then win or lose, you kind of always get rewarded for just playing the game. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, like you do that and you get on, you, you go through the game, you get rewarded, you get that, like you said, that dopamine level and okay. But I mean, like, does this delve into the other side of our podcast, which is psychology? I mean, the oh, psychology yeah. oh, of yeah. Hearthstone, not just playing the correct card, but being able to distract and mislead and conceal is, information from your part, being able to do the dastardly side of everything. You this know? is the psychology behind strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get underneath your opponent's skin. I mean, that's really the you reason want, why card games are so popular. You want to taunt them at the end of the game and say, well played, when really you crushed them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, maybe that's just me. I I always say well played. I say it every time right before I lose. I'm like, well played, sir. Well played. (laughs) Beat down. I always do the like wow emote that they added. I do. My favorite thing. I do. uh, (laughs) I do well played. Spectacular. I do well played and mistakes were made when they when they mess up. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) You're a horrible person. I am. I am. I am. I am. So spicy. No, but this is this is the psychology of strategy, and that's a whole nother episode. That's a whole nother. But we can take some tidbits and nuggets of information i think so um so bluffing right Mm -hmm. bluffing is big in strategy games right oh yeah you want to fake them out oh yeah you don't you you want them to make the wrong move right and so you can almost use uh i hate the term reverse psychology but that's that's what layman's would know it as or you're manipulating them yeah you are manip it's manipulation yeah it is manipulation Mm -hmm. you are you are taking advantage Mm. right of of what sort of social scripts that they know as a player right so so as players we identify these patterns right yeah and you can you can often identify what's going to happen in a game based on these patterns you see starcraft players do this all the time they're making a ton of different motions they're doing like 166 actions per minute with their uh with their fingers on a keyboard Mm -hmm. but it's it's all memorized right and and they they basically do sequences of patterns based on how things are playing out on the screen it's the same thing in hearthstone just to a lesser degree yeah in card games a lot of times we call that playing around a card you know you're playing a mage deck they have a secret of and you're like ah they might freeze my whole table or they might do this you make educated guesses and you play around that situation that goes into that psychology so making your opponent think that they have to play around something or you know make uh, vice versa making that decision whether to or not to play around something is psychological right misleading yeah, yeah, manipulation sure. secrets are really an interesting sort of game mechanic in this because you can it can be anything mm-hmm. it can be anything and that could be anything yeah i mean but after the game though winning and losing which is a major part of this game i mean like shorthanded you know games take what 10 15 minutes maybe maybe yeah, less pretty quick yeah. yeah they're pretty Unless quick. You're like playing so i mean and you're constantly winning or losing really quick that's yeah. that's another great point billy that you make because the barriers to entry are really low it's a low Commitment. time investment yes mm-hmm. and that's big right you oh, have other sure, yeah. you have other games and i'm not bagging on league of legends at all because we have friends at riot who we love and love our them friends and uh but i mean 
League of Legends games are like an hour long commitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! And, and yes. if it's a good team, oh, it could even be. It longer. could be longer. I think. Dude. I think there's a cap on it, but it's like at least half an hour. At, even if you're crushing, it's at least half an hour. So it's a big time sink. Mm-hmm. No wonder they made this into like a mobile app type environment. It's a store. It's so quick, easy. Short. You're in. Yeah. You're out. You know. Yep. Uh, but I mean, like. Also, the idea of it is you're playing multiple games. Win or lose, you still get a little something, but you want to you you go to play, you go to win. Oh yeah, you know that's what I always tell people: play to win. Don't just play because you think I'm better than you or anything like that. But Wait, I mean, like, do you get salty when you lose? You get I'll, so salty sometimes. Sometimes I get. I, I I know in Hearthstone I have gotten a little salty. Why are you so salty? I don't know. I don't know why Hearthstone brings that out in me. Like magic doesn't bring that out on me. I'm like, oh well, that was bad. That was good, but Hearthstone for some reason, I think it's because I can't see the other player. I'm like, oh mm. well, GG, you know, like so much sodium chloride. Yeah, down. you know. Just but then mad. when I win, you know, but if I win and lose too much, I get bored. Like, like playing Hearthstone at certain times, I would be like, oh well, this deck is just way too good, and I would win, 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 or I couldn't figure out the meta, so I would lose, 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 and I would get frustrated. And I would get tired of it. So that's when you Google the optimal deck. Oh, and just yeah. Net deck it, right? Yeah, and For you just sure. win, 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 win. Yeah, but even win, 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 it gets boring after a little while. You know what I mean? That's actually what got me to the arena game type because it was like you had to build a deck on the fly with only what you could possibly Ah, have. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like drafting. drafting. Yeah. 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 See, Magic has great drafting. So, I mean, how, what is that psychology behind that? Like, that win lose idea. Why do people get so angry at a digital game for thirty minutes? Why do oh, they get man. bored after constantly Billy's throwing winning? his curveballs? This isn't in the show notes. Oh well, yeah, it is. It's right here. <laughs> it's right there. There's no answer to it. There's no answer to it. I don't know. <laughs> I've thought a lot about that, Billy. Actually, because I, I have no shame. I'm a big Call of Duty nerd, and I've always played it for like ever since the franchise started. But right. I, it, but all that was when I was in college, and I was super into like the neuroscience of video games. Right, right, right. And you always saw that even though you could get these benefits of the visual field from playing a lot of like first person shooters, you would also get this super aggressive behavior. Yes. And I never really understood why, but I started to notice that it happened in me. Right. And that if I play, if I was like, if like if the release had just happened in November, and I was playing like every night for eight hours at a time, I would just be super angry. And oh, we all know people all who get time. angry over silly things. Yeah. Don't look at me. That was a tough mission. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one, man. <laughs> get on the point. Get on the point. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay, but sorry. No. I don't really know any kind of underlying substrates for why. But uh-huh. I would I imagine might... that win or lose, if you do too much of one, you just get bored. Like, overstimulated with dopamine so i'm classically trained in social psychology in one aspect uh at least at least for me this is a this is, might be a little bit of a unique twist and let me know if i'm going down the wrong rabbit hole uh-huh. here but one one twist could be the fact that you are dependent on other people uh-huh. for the success of your team especially in team-based games right, right it's right, less right. less applicable to hearthstone and maybe that's why um I, it's interesting that you you experience such vastly dramatic differences between both magic the gathering and hearthstone because they're both your fault if you lose and your fault if you win you built the deck you invested time into the deck you made the you were the only one that made any decisions in that right? matter yeah yeah but when you're in a team-based environment you have to rely on other people and so it can almost seem unfair to you because you might think that your skill is higher than them and you are not at fault. Mm. Everyone has this sort of I'm better than everyone else, like even if even in the slightest degree, they have this thought. And so if you abstract that and say my teammates weren't doing their job, it's easy to absolve yourself of the skill, right? Like I'm not at fault here. Uh-huh. It's them. I see. So, like, some people just believe they're better. Well, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm yeah. just messing with you. Well, that's, yeah. that's a really good point, Nick, because it only for so long. Okay, so in the team thing, you can offload onto your teammates that you're bad or that they're bad. Yes. Right? And so now in this Hearthstone context, you can only offload that to the game. Like, you can just say, well, that guy's cars are just better. But you can only do that for so long before or you're, like. Or he's doing that broken combo yes. or those sort of things. Yeah. All right, so 
All right, that, that, that's a good idea. I mean, I really was interested in that sort of stuff, and I would love to do something like that maybe one of these days for a future show. Sure. But as long as we're talking about this psychology behind these games, what makes a digital version of a trading card game better to some than a paper version? There's no paper. There is a paper version of Hearthstone, but it's very expensive. Blake looks eager to talk. Oh, yeah. I'm going to let him talk. Well, He's no, because so this. This, is, this is interesting because... I don't know if if, anybody, if anybody's caught on this listening, but Billy definitely likes heart. Sorry, magic a lot more in Hearthstone, and I feel the opposite way for right now. That's fine, and I I like Hearthstone. Don't get me wrong, gotcha, I like Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah. No, but I want to like I want to go through some of these points and get your maybe not necessarily counters, but your thoughts from like the Magic the Gathering perspective. Why you like it better? Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. Can I be the referee? I'm just kind of standing in the middle of you guys. <laughs> No, I, I was going to say, I you. like them both equally. I'm oh, just wow. going to take the middle I, ground. I, I like this. I like the Ivan Drago, and you're the scrappy Rocky. Oh, I yeah. would break you. Mm. Go, go, go. Go ahead. All right. So. Oh, sorry. You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that really the only the biggest benefit that the digital space provides is that it's just a little, it's easier to get into and play. But in at the end of the day, it's pres- presenting the same analog to the real world so Mm -hmm. you can like you buy packs you open them there's a lot of interactions it shows um so the mechanics are hold on really quick before you you go on to mechanics go on i want to ask you how many cards do you have like physical possession of oh uh i'm bad at this because i get rid of all my spare cards extra cards i give them to people okay but but you know, in people. general, you in know general, people. I have thousands of cards. You know, people who have collections of. Like, oh yeah, on the wall, I've had, right? I've had yeah. ridiculous collections. Digitally, it's extra storage space, and it's not even that because it's just that's ones true. and zeros. It's just saying yes, you have this. No, you don't have this. So, I mean, that's that's one aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Some people like that digital collection because it doesn't take up space in the physical world. True. One of the other sides of it, though, think about it. I've been play if I been playing hearthstone since launch right yeah and i've been playing hearthstone and i got all the expansions i got all those things right yeah, yeah. in magic if i had done that i could easily go up to let's say you blake and say ah oh, you're interested in magic but you don't have the funds to get started here you go That's i can't true. do that with a digital collection yeah but i mean they still okay so i'm not defending hearthstone here no but no I no, am no, saying... no i'm just saying the point to well, the idea of the digital analog versus the paper analog is sure. the idea of being able to share it as a community versus having to wait for someone to actually get a good deck together. Does so that you're make right. sense? They don't have trading in Hearthstone. Right. But but what they do do is they they sort of block off older cards that you know, the mechanics might be a little too overpowered. They go through and they say, Okay, these are no longer going to be in tournament play. So they'll They'll block it off, and that that makes the barrier to entry for new players even easier because then they don't have to go back and get those cards. They also give all the starting players all the basic decks. So you can always play with a basic deck with your friends who are new. But on the other side of that, Magic does the same thing with their different types of modes. Now, but how much do those cost? Uh, that's not really that expensive, honestly, if you think about... But remember, this is free. Free. Right. It's not very expensive in the cost of playing a card game. Now, to be the now, that is a very sliding scale, right? For sure. But on the other side of it, you're right. Hearthstone does have that advantage because of the fact that I can get digital cards. I can do quests and events to get more cards. And every time an expansion comes out, they usually give me cards. I get cards upon cards upon cards. And if you're lazy, you can just buy packs. You could just buy True. packs. Yeah. And, and that's, you. that's a whole other thing is that they use this marketing scheme where they will not let you buy specific cards, and that's by design. Oh, they yes. say, here's a pack that might contain the card you want, and if you don't get it, why don't you buy another pack? Uh, they also, But they also help you out with that because they have the dust system. In yes, the yes, they do. So if, if you, you get, so get rid of a bunch of extra cards that you oh, have, yeah, you yeah, collect yeah. dust, and you get enough, you can actually make a card you want. I guess yeah. Magic kind of has that in a sense, where if you get a bunch of cards you don't like, you can just trade them in. Yeah. But then you have to interact with people. people. And, I know, uh, those people. Uh, well, I think that's the main people. thing about the digital versus 
paper yeah. well, type well, of world. Blake was saying community. a couple of weeks ago he doesn't like the crowds, right, for Black Friday. He just likes oh, yeah, to yeah, stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so well, Hearthstone, I can understand now. I'm oh, starting ha, to piece it together. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Right. He, like have, he only has to do little emotes to Next week, people. Blake is just going to be remote. So <laughs> he's going to be like, spectacular over and over. Spectacular. Bit. No, that's actually interesting because that's why I got into Hearthstone because I didn't have any friends that played Magic the Gathering. Yeah, that's the question you have to ask. Do you want to play because of community or do you want to play digitally and have uh, availability? Yeah. Community versus availability, I think it is. But how does that go into the idea of how do you design for community and availability? Because Hearthstone has no sense of necessary. I mean, there's communities out there. But Hearthstone has no sense of community. Dude, I think it does. Yeah, there is. How? The forums. Ah, but is the heart... Oh, oh I forgot. Streamers. Blizzard does have a form. Oh, well, streamers isn't necessarily Blizzard. No. Like, no. Friday but Night Magic is held by but Blizzards of the Coast. But the, the, the streamers are part of the community, and they are the strongest voices in the community. If you have players that you go and watch all the time... And that are popular within the community, I would argue that that's like almost the face of the community. Well, Magic has the same thing. There are tons of Magic streamers out there, magic right? Which yeah. streamers? Sorry. Oh, it's uh, that, yeah. yeah. All right, you were talking about mechanics, Blake. I'm, uh, yeah, and then sorry, I interrupted mechanics. you and went on this big tangent about. No, 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 I think this was really an informative idea because I think that's a lot of things people come up with when talking about digital versus paper card game for sure yeah i mean the only thing i was gonna say about mechanics is they use just very similar and basic mechanics to well-known games that's really all i have wow i have nothing what, on that, that examples was... um so the biggest one and i i had it up up earlier but it doesn't matter so you know in magic the gathering you play a creature first round unless it has some extra text or haste or anything like that you it has summoning sickness yeah yeah summoning sickness same thing so, so something that i was used to or i had seen before mm-hmm. just so these things weren't so i don't know foreign to me when i started yeah. consistencies yeah we talked about this in the board game episode i like it's amazing how many parallels i'm anyway. telling you we yeah. should do another board game episode there's so much to talk about <laughs> but i just like talking about board games all day oh this okay. one's cool hang on i like this point before you go on, go on. uh it uses storylines and characters for a while so it has the familiar like, yeah so this got me super hooked on hearthstone because yeah? i just play yeah me and my buddy we used to play I think we played the Pandaria expansion last and we had been doing that a bunch and we he moved to one part of the country, I moved to the other, and I don't know, we just started playing. That Marissa. is true. How do I play magic with you if we live sixty miles apart, Billy? Magic online. Yeah. Okay, but 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 I want to use my physical cards. Uh magic on uh magic online has a way of actually t- put like, you know, you can do a phantom match, which is two bucks, three bucks. And it gives you a collection of cards. Why isn't it free? Well, that's the thing. We already talked about that in Hearthstone. That's yeah. the thing Hearthstone has over other card games and other games in general is that it has free. Yeah, free is a, free is I a mean, big deal I mean, it's in this free, case. but pay us later. And that's true. I get that. Right. I agree with that standpoint 100%. That's the joy of it. And that's why people go to Magic Online for the same situation for different reasons. So now, now when we initially went out and set out to do this episode, I'm sorry, I'm going to take us in a different direction now. Do it. Yeah. So w- when we initially set out to do this episode, we wanted to do sort of analysis of what the cross-platform sort of differences were, mm-hmm. right? So it's you know it's a it's available like we said earlier across iPhones, tablets, uh, Android. Android, and PC, mm-hmm. right? Now I'm gonna ask you to ask me what the next question <laughs> wait no <laughs> billy what is the next question some of the major differences of these cross platforms yes okay there we go this is what we that was dying dying for this one. this <laughs> is why i still have the segue crown okay fine yeah you got it <laughs> that was the <laughs> worst <laughs> segue ever i i relinquish it for this episode all right you you got it you this got it episode. but okay so so this it's amazing so when we set out to do this episode this small section was basically what we wanted to talk about <laughs> and we ended up talking about so much more and that's that's the beauty of human factors is you mm-hmm. can find psychology and design and human factors elegant anywhere else yeah that's true and that's amazing so let's actually talk about the differences across platforms talk right? about the name of the podcast, yeah. so so the major the major difference here is mm. is screen real estate right yeah if you're working on a phone or a tablet 
you have less screen size than a monitor, presumably. Yeah, what's yeah. the average size of a phone? Oh, probably like small. Probably like four to seven inches now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're okay. it's but, it's interesting because you know they had those interactive uh, like game boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on PC they're they're a lot more interactive. But I couldn't believe that they actually still got that into the phone. Mm, like mm-hmm. you can still goof around and all that kind of silliness. Yeah, I mean, so so one interesting thing. Um, well, I guess these points should just all be together. I think. All right. Well, we talked a little bit about the controls earlier, right? All the all the controls are cl- click, drag. Or tap and drag. Yeah. Right. There's there's not really a difference across platforms. The only other advantage that I can think about using PC maybe over a tablet or mobile version is that you have right click. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keyboard, but they don't really utilize the keyboard. So what right click does is it's an, it's an accelerator in a lot of... Um, in, a, in, in, a, in a couple situations. I don't want to say it's in a lot of situations because it's not. It's It's like... If you, I think if you like right click on a deck or something, uh, on a, so, so there's a screen in the game where you are putting together a deck, right? And Your deck builder screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, on the right hand side, you have a list of all the items in your deck or, or all the cards. Now, if you right click on it, it will turn the pages, all the, all the cards in your book. It's like are, a little book. Yeah. Yeah, there there's a pagination, right? Where, yeah, pagination. Yeah, yeah. It's page just controls, paging. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. left talk. Kind of so, um, so yeah, uh, so it will if you right click on the thing, it will flip to the page that that card is on, so that you can add another one to your deck. Like that is just a simple accelerator. Simple little accelerator. It offers no gameplay advantage. No, most so, of the they're really good at not making one little control or trick a gameplay breaker than anything else. Yeah, but yeah. what I did notice, and I noticed this especially because I was playing Gadget Stand and bought some cards or whatever, and mm-hmm. opening the packs, like I, I was paying attention to just the interactions. It is hard on the mobile. Like sometimes it speeds up the movement through cards so much so that you can't interact with them. Yeah, and it gets very okay. clumsy. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I mean, I think that's just because it's still pretty new bringing it over to a mobile app, right? Well, I don't know. They're pretty good. It's just I, it could be my screen or how, how I have my acceleration set up that was doing that. And, I mean, stuff gets buggy. That's just the way things go, right? When you guys are yeah. designing for a tablet or cross-platform type of thing, do you guys take in consideration age and operating systems? Wow, that's like this next question. How yeah. do you enter? <laughs> How do interaction designers slash experience designers make decisions about features across platforms? You worded that even better than what we have in the show notes. That's it's um, like I read he's these the things. segue master. Wow, my man. No, Look up you know, bam. please send us a segue crown for Billy. He deserves it, man. I this guy works you. hard. No, I this guy. No, this is good. for the segues. <laughs> so, so when you when you were saying segues. age, did you mean like age of the operating system? Age of the fo- uh, like your phone. User. When's yeah. your phone? How old is your phone? Oh, that's a good question. My like phone is about two years old. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? So, I mean, like, my phone, m- when my phone came out, Hearthstone wasn't around. Yeah. Well, it, the interesting part about that, and I won't even pretend to know, to per- I won't even pretend to tell you that I know how the back inner workings of Hearthstone are, but I would imagine that it's made with some kind of responsive design, mm-hmm. which which goes ahead and talks to your phone, says, like, what viewport size or what right. size is. Okay. Like how okay. Yeah, that's more, of a, that's more of a requirements from the development side type of deal. So that's, that's more of the coders who, you know, we kind of, I don't want to say we tell them what to do, but we say, like, this would be, no, 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 stop. <laughs> really, we don't tell them what to do, but we say, you know, it would be really great for the user if, you know, and they come back and say, we just can't do that with the technology. Or we can, or, or we can and we put it in. So it's kind of so, like a give and take, push me, pull me type of so, thing. So where we work with the developer, or we work with the users and say, okay, what do you need in order to have a good time playing this game or mm-hmm. have a good, you know, have a good experience while you play? They're more... Uh, interacting with the systems and saying, okay, so what do I need to produce in my code in order to interact with you, the phone, efficiently to make this uh, interaction that the user needs possible, right? So they're kind of the intermediary between the hardware Mm -hmm. and the user, whereas we're kind of, uh, or, or 
and the human factors person and we're kind of that intermediary between the developer and the user mm-hmm. right that's that's the best well, I way get it. I get yeah. it I get it it's kind of like a chain right mm-hmm. so oftentimes it'll be the human factors person or the experience designer person and the developer what's the word I'm looking for it's not arguing but it's it's, it's kind of like a give and take yeah, it's like, like what can we, we can do? We can make it like this, but we're going to have to dial back on the graphics here, or exactly. Or yeah, there's we might have to get rid of this feature because we need this feature. Yeah, yeah. based yeah. off of just like what what's going on in software development, sometimes that does override it's what they like, can do. I yeah. get it. You're facilitating the idea of a team group dynamic. That's just my experience, though. Blake, do you have any like additional experience? No, in that? I mean, is that pretty pretty good? No, it's definitely pretty good. I mean, it's uh. I've gotten a newer perspective on it recently starting the new, my new job and it's um it's hard cuz it where I used to work we had a lot of input like to the left like far before a lot of program was getting done but now yeah. I'm kind of at the opposite side of that but it's mm-hmm. because of the development schedule you just you right. have to meet what the technology needs right um they they also have to let's see so back to your initial question mm-hmm. which was like what kind of things do you have to take into consideration right so not only do we have the sort of um, hardware requirements, right? Uh, you also have to you have to think about the user in terms of their interaction. So, like, think about your finger and how your finger interacts with the screen on your tablet or the screen on your phone. It's going to be different because of the size of the screen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on your phone your finger takes up a lot more percentage of the total screen than it does on a tablet. And so you have to design the cards to be small enough to where they can all fit on the screen, mm-hmm. but big enough or make the hit boxes big enough to where it can, it can um, differentiate which card that you're trying to select and sort of understand what your intent is. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta make it not clutter the screen and uh, still sort of, work <laughs> well even then i mean you're we've all seen hearthstone like i guess i appreciate the most seeing it on a small screen but like then it's making sure the text is readable by the majority of people making sure that the graphics even look good that the interactions and all that we have clean. the same situation when we do when we see video games from an older platform come to a newer platform sometimes or if your resolution isn't good enough on your TV because it'll get like really hard to read the text and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys got to take that in consideration when designing this new form, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Any uh, any closing thoughts on Hearthstone? I mean, I think it's a great game, but I didn't ever think that so much design actually went into it when you're going through cross-platform. And it would be interesting to see how many different things do that as well. Yeah future episodes yeah future, future how about you blake any closing any closing thoughts no i just really enjoyed doing this with you guys this, this was a good this episode, was a good episode. we like kind of got episode. away from what we were yeah. trying to get at yeah, it was a lot of fun it's yeah, interesting yeah. so i mean this episode was about hearthstone but it's not really about hearthstone right it's like it's about the interaction that and how how designers and human factors people have to sort of utilize you know what what sort of input methods they have what kind of limitations they have depending on what platform they're designing for right Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and Hearthstone is just a good example because they're trying to accomplish the same thing over multiple platforms. All those goals that we just you know talked about earlier with getting the person to onboard and stay, and that's it's all the same, mm-hmm. right? So we're basically, I'm, I hate to break this to you guys, but we're basically hiding an analysis behind a fun free-to-play game. That, whoa! Whoa, I know, right? Check this out. Any of our listeners can go check it out. Um, we're we're not getting paid by them to review it or anything. It's just, <laughs> it's one of those things. You know, it's we're, just fun. We're they gamers. Want to, and, though. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they can try it out. Compare, contrast. What do you guys think? Let us know. That's going to be it for today. I mean, we're trying something a little bit different. Uh, this, is, this is fun. Mm-hmm. This is fun. If you guys want to be featured on the show... Probably the best way. Yeah, this is this is cool. I thought I'm this excited was cool. about this. Go ahead and call our new voicemail line <laughs> at nine zero one six four six one HFC Human Factors Cast. So nine zero one six four six one HFC. HFC. Yeah. Oh, cool. So the HFC is uh, four three two. So that's nine zero one six four six one four three two. And if you guys keep it under about. Uh, a minute to two. We'll play it on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we fine. talk about complex things. Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, we're uh, give us a call. We'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, voicemail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're also all over social media. You can comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter. Send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail dot com. We're pretty much everywhere where uh, podcasts are found. So what, yep, yep, yep. SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Store. You know, favorite podcast directory, whatever that is. We're always trying to t- keep in touch with you guys. Wow, that was hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's always so good at <laughs> this. It's been a long day, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, send us uh, topics that you want to hear about. This was one of them. We, oh, shoot, we didn't give them credit. Oh, uh, Adam. Adam, yeah. Yes, it was Adam. Oh, uh, Adam, what's what his last his name? name? Shoot. Uh, thank you, Adam, oh, for thank suggesting. You, Adam. Blake, where can they fight. find you? Oh, you guys can find me at UX Chilbro on Twitter. Billy. Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube or on Twitter at Comstar Cleric. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it depends!